नमस्कार ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर सर रिस्पेक्टेड डीन ऑफ कॉलेजेस प्रोफेसर बलराम पानी वाइल मागो मैडम डायरेक्टर सी ओ एल रजिस्ट्रार सर डॉक्टर मैडम डी एस डब्ल्यू सर रिस्पेक्टेड प्रिंसिपल्स एंड माई कलीग्स एंड डीन एकेडमिक्स प्रोफेसर हनीत वी हैव असेंबल हेयर इन ऑर्डर टू हैव अ बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हाउ टू इम्प्लीमेंट नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी वी आर ऑल अवेयर दैट द यूनिवर्सिटी हैज फॉर्मुलेटेड द अंडर ग्रेजुएट करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू विद इन एम टू इनकॉर्पोरेट द फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल्स विच आर देयर इन द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी सो वेन एवर वी एज इम्प्लीमेंटर्स ऑफ द पॉलिसी टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन हाउ टू इम्प्लीमेंट द पॉलिसी दीज फंडामेंटल्स हैव टू बी केप्ट इन माइंड सो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट वट एवर वी आर डूइंग वेदर वी आर मेकिंग कोर्सेज वी आर फ्रेमिंग द सिलेबाई वी आर लुकिंग एट द पेडोलॉजी दैट शुड बी अडॉप्टेड और वी आर लुकिंग एट द टाइप और मोड ऑफ असेसमेंट एंड इवेल्युएशन द स्टूडेंट शुड बी द फोकस देर हैज टू बी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी गिवन टू स्टूडेंट बिकॉज द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी क्लियरली टॉक्स अबाउट गिविंग ऑप्शन टू द स्टूडेंट्स सो दैट दे आर एबल टू डेवलप देयर ओन एकेडमिक पाथ एज पर देयर टैलेंट एंड इंटरेस्ट सो देयर फॉर फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी हैज टू बी केप्ट इन माइंड third thing we need to keep in mind is that nep also talks about not having hard separations between science and arts between curricular and extra curricular between academic and vocational so therefore our curriculum and framework should be integrating most of this so that we are able to bring in multidisciplinarity as well as holistic education the innovations and entrepreneurship when the honorable prime minister talks about atmanirbhar bharat that is so much dependent upon research so much dependent he will not be allowed to opt for fundamental principles which are there in the national education policy so whenever we as implementers of the policy take into consideration how to implement the policy these fundamentals have to be kept in mind so the first thing is that whatever we are doing whether we are making courses we are framing the uh, syllabi we are looking at the pedagogy that should be adopted or we are looking at the type or mode of assessment and evaluation the student should be the focus there has to be flexibility given to student because the national education policy clearly talks about giving options to the students so that they are able to develop their own academic path as per their talent and interest so therefore flexibility has to be kept in mind third thing we need to keep in mind is that nep also talks about not having hard separations between science and arts between curricular and extra curricular between academic and vocational so therefore our curriculum and framework should be integrating most of this so that we are able to bring in multidisciplinarity as well as holistic education the innovations and entrepreneurship when the honorable prime minister talks about atmanirbhar bharat that is so much dependent upon research so much dependent upon critical thinking and, and analysis therefore our structure should have options for bringing in research within the curriculum we also don't want to produce a student who is just academically oriented who does not have compassion towards others or who is not aware about the constitutional values so therefore the value education is also very important that's why we talk about embedding within the curriculum ethics human and constitutional values and when we are giving education which is going to empower our youth as well as i i will say improve the economy and development of our country is very important to bring in equity accessibility and inclusion and we all know that unless we understand our own cultural rooting unless we understand our own ethics which is so much ingrained in the languages that we have the diverse language that we have in india and the policy talks about multilingualism so therefore we have to promote multilingualism and in uh, with regard to this particular point we already know that the university is going to facilitate the colleges in providing education for those languages where college may not have a particular faculty to teach a language say for example every college may not have a teacher teaching tamil language but maybe there are students who would like to opt maybe there are five in one college four in another five in another so all these students can be clubbed together and university can facilitate to provide a teacher who can teach through online mode so that the option is available to a student to learn such languages 
the I would say constraints of resources should not be a hurdle in the process of providing multilingualism. Conceptual understanding has to be given to students. We have to focus on how to give that conceptual understanding and, and analytical thinking so that students do not, you know, are not focusing upon rote learning, which is something we need to give up. So our way of teaching as well as our assessment and evaluation should keep in mind and the curriculum that we frame should be keeping in mind all these concepts. So these fundamental principles of NEP are required to be implemented through our undergraduate curriculum framework 2022 because all these aspects have been ingrained and embedded in this structure so, so that when we implement it, because uh, I'll just because when we talk about implementation of NEP, it's a policy driven, you know, it has so many ideals, but how to translate those ideals in a workable form, format, a structure is required. And that's why we have this undergraduate curriculum framework. So when we talk about the implementation, we already have done a small part of the exercise, that is develop the curriculum. So first semester syllabi is ready. It has been approved by the Academic Council and Executive Council. It is re ready to be implemented. We will be sharing with you all very soon on the website. And second is the pedagogy. Because you may have a very, very good curriculum. But unless how are you going to deliver that particular curriculum to the students is dependent upon the pedagogy that is adopted. So therefore, the pedagogy cannot be just a lecture method. We have to devise ways. And unless we train the teachers with different available pedagogies, we will not be able to deliver. Now, if, if I don't know how many of you may have had a look at the draft undergraduate, uh, a four-year undergraduate curricular and credit framework, which is shared by the UDC. If you look at it, it talks about different methods of teaching. It is lecture methods, student activities, practicum, lab-based learning, you have field work. There are so many things that are ways we can deliver the curriculum. But how to deliver it, what will be the best mechanism to deliver that particular cur curriculum will depend upon the nature of the curriculum. So therefore, training of the teachers are very, very important on the pedagogy part of it. I think till the time we start our session from the 1st of November, uh, all colleges should be involved in giving that kind of training with respect to pedagogy to the teachers so that they are able to take forward what is there in the curriculum and deliver it to the students. Uh, we all know that skills and values are to be imparted. Skill edu for skill education, we already have uh, 43 skill courses which are approved by AC and EC. Uh, so out of that, one needs to you know choose and then provide options to the student to learn it. We have value education, uh, value addition courses. Uh, 24 of them are approved by the AC and EC. And the assessment part, we will take it up a little later because that will be followed once we start with the curriculum. So if you look at the category of courses, we have discipline specific courses and discipline specific courses as the name suggests and as you are already aware of it when we implemented CBCS is a mandatory core course which is to be taught in a program. So when you are talking about single core discipline program, say for example, you are talking about uh, BA honors in English. That means the core discipline that is going to be taught for such a program will be English only. Similarly, for BAC honors in physics, the core discipline will be only physics, right? So. And in case of multidisciplinary programs, say you have in the case of science, you have life, BAC life science program, where you have three disciplines learning, that is botany, zoology, chemistry. Or you, can, you have the BA program, where you have two combinations, two disciplines are studied as a core. So you have BA program in uh, economics and mathematics. So these two will be the core discipline. Then you have the uh, uh, discipline specific elective, and these are again related to the core discipline that are being studied. And whenever we say that it is elective, it is implicit that you are going to give choices to the student to pick. And why we are talking about choices? Because every discipline has different domains for specialization. Say when you talk about uh, BAC honors in physics, one may talk about mechanics, one may talk about optics, thermodynamics and so on. So if a student wishes to specialize later in a particular area of physics, he or she can pick up those specific areas and those specializations can be developed through discipline specific electives. Then we have the generic elective courses which are to be provided by uh, the departments. But as we all know in CBCS, generic electives are meant for students who do not belong to the parent department offering that particular course. Because this is meant to be offered to students outside the department so that the other students studying a different discipline may be able to get the discipline, a multidisciplinary perspective. So maybe a student who may be, may be studying say environmental science 
may like to take up because he may be interested in involving uh, in say uh, sustainable uh, ways of involving community in environmental uh, you know measures so in such a case a student may be only studying about science and he may think that why don't i study how to take whatever i have learned to the community how to build a rapport with the community so that they are made aware of such measures and they are you know participating in the process of sustainable development in that case he may offer a course of social work where you have how to connect with community so therefore it's a very very different subject altogether but then it is relevant and we are talking about student having the liberty and flexibility to choose the courses to you know enhance his skill and then develop you know a, a unique i would say specialization or unique with unique skill that he has uh, he's able to use his potential and interest to deliver when he starts to work whether he may be working for a, an employer or he may be a entrepreneur and ready to give jobs to others also so and we have uh, three more courses other than these that is ability enhancement course uh, skill enhancement course and value addition courses now these are all all the three are two credit courses whereas the previous three types of courses that you have seen these are four credit courses now ability enhancement course uh, if you can see it consists of two groups of courses you have uh, environmental studies and the other is the, the pool of indian languages so when you talk about these uh, two types of courses the two courses will run in flip mode so maybe half of the student may be studying in the first semester environment the other half will be studying indian language now the the range of indian language available to a student to choose are the 22 languages which are already listed in the eighth schedule of our constitution so all these ranges have to be provided you can't say that you just have two teachers of two languages say maybe you have hindi and you may have bengali but you don't have other teachers so you can't say that we are not offering the other languages kindly offer all 22 let's see how many students are willing to take up because ultimately we want in case if there is no teacher then the university will facilitate online learning of that particular language in case if a neighboring college has a teacher teaching a particular language course that can be utilized so therefore we are going to come up with the concept of cluster colleges which we will be calling as knowledge network and these cluster colleges will be coordinating amongst themselves so that they are able to provide maximum options to the students in terms of it can be generic elective it can be skill enhancement course it can be ability enhancement course in terms of languages because i think every college has teachers teaching environmental studies so i think that's not an issue but then we are talking about ability enhancement course from in the context of indian language then you have skill enhancement course uh, as if you have seen the Uh, courses that are being approved by the they have been approved by the ac and ec the skill enhancement course mainly are basically focusing upon two types of skills in the first semester one is a very general skill where you you talk about communication skill or business writing skill business communication skill or computer application skill which i think is very very relevant for any kind of uh, for any student pursuing any kind of program and the other type is where a student may like to focus upon more on say uh, you know finer areas like uh, python coding etc then you have value addition courses where uh, we have the chairperson of the value addition uh, committee here professor niranjan and there are 24 of these courses which are mainly um, aimed towards personality development embedding ethical cultural and constitutional values promoting critical thinking in their knowledge system scientific temper and so on so these are the range of courses you will see in each semester in every undergraduate program now coming to the definition many times people ask if you have uh, you know credit distribution of a particular course three lecture one tutorial and zero practical and there, there can be another combination where you have you can have say uh, three lectures zero tutorial one credit for practical so they tend to ask how many hours of practical so that is provided in the definition of academic credit and academic credit is a unit by which the coursework is measured it determines the number of hours of instruction required per week one credit is equivalent to one hours of teaching that is whether you are having tutorial whether you are having a lecture one hour one credit is one hour per week and in case of practical or field work it is two hours per week so when one hour of practical is done one in a week for 15 weeks the credit earned will be only 0.5 so therefore in order to earn one credit of a practical in from practical you have to have two hours of in a week right for 15 weeks whatever we are talking in a semester we are cons considering it as 15 weeks total 15 weeks okay now coming to the structure uh any questions till here before we proceed 
Yes. Can somebody please give a mic to her? I'll just take one question and we'll move ahead. Okay, you can, maybe you can try speaking. No, no, yes. Uh, see, whenever we are talking about generic elective, it should be something different from the one which has been opted as a core. So if you have two disciplines as a core, GE will be something different. So you have, say, chemistry, physics, and mathematics as the uh, core discipline in a BAC physical sciences, BAC program in physical sciences. You have maths, physics, and chemistry, right? So your GE will be something different from maths, physics, and chemistry. Okay? Right? I hope it's clear. Uh, I think we'll take it after after this. I think that was important, which a point which I missed out. So, yeah, coming to table three of the UGCF, this is a structure which we are going to follow uh, for single core discipline program, where we are talking about honors in three years. Now, let me share you one very important point, which I, uh, you know, very generally comes in this area, that will the honors, uh, you know, Honours will be will, will be given after three years or all honours will be given after four years? This is a very, very common question that one gets. So in the case of our structure as of now, honours will be given at the end of three years if the student is pursuing a single core discipline program. In case if a student is pursuing multiple core discipline program where we uh, conventionally, as of now, we are calling as program courses, BAC, BA program, BAC program, BCom program. All these program will students will be awarded honors at the end of four years. So at the end of three years, they will be given a simple degree without honors. Okay. So uh, I'll explain you why this differentiation is there. Uh, but let's have a look at the structure first of all. So you have the core discipline uh, courses. In the first semester, a student will be studying three core discipline-specific core papers. One generic elective paper, that means any, any uh, discipline other than the core. Then you have ability enhancement course, where a student may be opting for environmental studies, environmental science, or an Indian language, whichever he, he or she prefers. Then you will, uh, the student will choose one value addition course. In all, a student will be studying seven courses, fine. but if you look at the credit, number of credits, 12 credits out of 22 shall be earned from the core. Because NEP always talks about having an in-depth knowledge in one or more discipline. So therefore, 50 or more than 50% focus of the study is always on the core discipline. Fine? So similarly, we will, uh, in the second semester also, same pattern is followed. You'll have three discipline-specific core then one generic elective from the pool of courses, then one ability enhancement course. So if a student has studied in the first semester in ability enhancement course, environmental science, then he or she will study now in the second semester in Indian language of his choice. Okay. So these two categories of uh, courses will be offered in flip mode. Then you have skill enhancement courses from the pool, a student will be able to choose one. And the last is the value addition course. Again, from a pool, a student has to choose one. Now some, uh, you know, some teachers have raise a query. Can we offer one skill enhancement course in our college? Can we offer one value addition course in our college? I said if you look at UGCF and if you understand the spirit of NEP, when we say pool, pool can never be one. It has to be more than one. So kindly, we have to ensure that there is enough choices for the students to pick up. We cannot say, tell the student, you pick up this skill enhancement course. We don't have teachers, we are offering only one. Now that's why again I am coming to this same thing. That's why we need to make cluster colleges. Fine? We need to maximize our available resources, whether it's teachers or infrastructure, whatever. Now, at the end of first year, after completing the first and second semester, a student will be able to earn 44 credits. right? And if he or she wishes to exit, then the student shall be awarded undergraduate certificate in that field of study after securing the mandatory 44 credits. Okay? So that's why we had uh, requested the departments and the college teachers also participated in the committee of courses. That when you make the courses, the syllabi, kindly ensure that out of the six discipline-specific core, ensure that one is an application-based course. 
fine? And also try to map it with the kind of skill that we should be providing. That a student who exists at the end of first year should be able to get employment or have employment opportunities better than what he would have got after passing just class 12. So therefore, an attempt has been made, let's see how we as a system are successful in, you know, uh, implementing that with that spirit. Now, second uh, year, that is the third semester, if you look at it, we have three discipline specific core again to be studied. And there is a choice given to student either to choose one discipline specific elective or choose one generic elective. Now, what is the, philosophy or the, the, the rationale behind this choice? Why are you giving choices? See, let me tell you that NEP always talks about giving choices to student. So there may be student who would not like to diversify his knowledge but focus on one core discipline and study. If he is that type of student who wishes not to diversify but only study his core discipline, then he should be given the choice. So let him either choose one discipline specific elective. And there may be others who may think that, okay, I'm studying this as a core, but let me see what are the other, you know, uh, disciplines. Say, if you talk about, say, he or she may be thinking about, say, water management. Or you talk about, you know, uh, biochemistry. So the person may be, you know, uh, studying botany honors, but he would like to pick up courses of chemistry so that because he would like to now go for biochemistry kind of, you know, specialization later on. So maybe he would like to pick, you know, courses from chemistry while studying botany as a core. So that those kind of options are to be given. So, so that's why we have either the student can choose one discipline specific elective from the pool or a generic elective, wh whichever he chooses. The, then the rest, uh, you have one ability enhancement course again. So if environment one and language one has been studied, then the student will be studying environment two and language paper two in the ability enhancement course in second year. Then uh, again, since we are talking about mul you know multiple entry exit, when we talk about skill enha enhancement courses, whether you are giving like, or whether you are giving say hands-on learning in skill enhancement courses, a student has to sit in a classroom and study. But when we are talking about multiple entry exit, if a student wishes to exit after getting a diploma, it would be more beneficial for him to go for internship or apprenticeship. In case he, if he wants to be a social worker, maybe doing, going for a community outreach may be more helpful than sitting in a classroom and studying the skill enhancement courses. So therefore, these, this particular choice is given that either you, you study skill enhancement course, or if you don't want to study skill enhancement course, go for internship, go for, for the apprenticeship, or maybe you associate with the project, or you go for community outreach. So these are the options which are available to a student, and we have to make these choices available at the level of the college where the actual implementation will be taking place. Then again, we have value addition course in the second year, the third semester and fourth semester. So there can be, you know, uh, different course which he or she will be studying. Now, one thing which I would like to mention with respect to skill enhancement courses is that there are certain courses uh, which may have very close relation with a discipline. Say, for example, a student who is studying BAC computer science, he will not be allowed to opt for computer uh, skill enhancement course in computer applications, basic applications, okay? Because, you know, that means he is not upgrading his knowledge. He is just trying to opt for a simple way out. So that is, is not going to be given to students. So if you are a student of, oh, you know, already specializing in that particular discipline, then in that case, say for example, uh, paper on, I think, science and society. So science students should not be given this option to opt for science and society. It should be meant for students who are pursuing humanities, social sciences and arts, right? So because we want the student to have a diverse knowledge, that is a Yeah, so if you talk about, uh, so therefore every course that is there in the pool of skill enhancement course or value addition course will have certain riders to ensure that student pursuing a particular course as a core and its allied areas in the skill or value enhancement courses, they should not be allowed to opt so that they are able to study other courses and diversify and enhance their, uh, you know, knowledge in those other areas. Yes. Uh, when we when we put up on the website, it will be specified so that there is a clarity. It is right now not specified. Jo, abhi. <laughs> Sir, uh, see, we have to talk about raising the standard of education. This is what, because that's why I, I started my presentation with the principles. I do not know. 
whether no, no, sir. Uh, I think there is some confusion. Let me clear it. Skill enhancement courses specific to our discipline will be coming very soon in the uh, you know next semester onwards, right? It will be a discipline specific course because we want the student to have the requisite skill. Say for example, when we talk about student who is pursuing B.Sc. you know in microbiology, we would want him to have the skill of doing pathological test in a lab. If he exit, he should be employable in that particular sector. So therefore, what I am saying is uh, a skill which already a basic skill at that level. For example, computer application will be you will be teaching only how to use Word, how to use Excel, how will you prepare presentation using my you know Microsoft. These are very very basic, and that's why we are saying that somebody who is pursuing computer science should not be opting for those courses. And maybe uh, if uh, I think a call needs to be taken whether. It will be left to colleges or university will uh, provide a guideline on this. Now, coming to the end of second second year, uh, a student will be able to earn a total of 88 credits. And if the student exits at the end of two years, he or she shall be awarded diploma, undergraduate diploma in that particular field of study. Okay. Now, coming to the third year, you have the fifth semester. In fifth semester, again, there are three core papers to be studied. Then there is one compulsorily because by this time, by second year, student may have seen you know diverse things about other disciplines. Now he or she has to have a discipline-specific elective. So there, that's why we made it compulsory that in the fifth semester there should be one discipline-specific elective to be chosen from the pool. Then uh, one G will also be compulsory to be taken up, which can be taken up from an allied subject also or otherwise. It's free to the student. Then uh, the ability enhancement course will now be you know not taught from. Fifth semester onwards, it's finished. Value addition and ability enhancement. All these courses will end in the fourth semester. So from fifth semester, you are focusing on the discipline-specific elective, GE internship, skill enhancement courses. All these will be there, and uh, this will lead to secure, you know, securing 132 credits at the end of the sixth semester. So if you look at the pattern, one six, semester one and two, you have the same uniform pattern. Three and four, you have a uniform pattern where you have choices between DSC and GE, right? And if you come to the fifth and sixth, you have again a uniform pattern. But every semester, the credits to be earned are uniform, 22, 22 per semester. So at the end of three years, a student, if he or she exits, he or she shall be awarded bachelor in that field of study. In, in case of single core discipline program, honors will be awarded after securing 132 credits. Then coming to, in case if a student wishes to, you know, uh, go for the fourth year, fine. We have made a provision to study research methodology as a discipline specific elective in the sixth semester. Because unless you have a proper grounding on research methodology, you cannot start writing a dissertation. Leave alone writing a dissertation, but choose a problem appropriately. Do even review of literature on that particular topic. So therefore, uh, it is desirable that any student who would like to go for fourth year of four year undergraduate program should study the, the research methodology as a discipline specific elective. Now why we have put it in elective even though we would want everybody to study research methodology, maybe some student may not have that orientation to do research. So he or she may think why should I study research methodology. So that's why we have shifted from GE first, we put in GE but then every field has its own uh, you know, nuances of doing research. Fine. Even data analysis, the way you do in statistics, the way you do in biology, fine. the way you do in genetics and some other field of study, that may be a little different. So that's why from GE it was brought to discipline specific elective so that we don't make it mandatory, make it a choice of the student who wishes to study, let him or her study. Now, say a student, because we know how students are, you know, they get influenced by their friends, by their peers, right? He or she may think that let me exit after three years, I'll find a job. I won't do the fourth year. So he chooses not to study research methodology in the sixth semester. Now, I mean, can we say that he has missed the bus and therefore he will not be studying research methodology? No. An option is given to study research methodology, same paper, again in the seventh semester. So that compulsorily he has that conceptual building in research by learning that particular paper. But the thing is that he has to study the research methodology paper as discipline specific elective. At the same time, he has to now formulate his research problem, do 
survey of literature. So maybe it will be a quite a taxing time for him because he needs to under understand first of all and then implement. But in case if he has studied in the sixth semester, it makes things very simple because he already has a grounding. And now what he has to do is whatever he has learned in the research methodology, he has to now start implementing, experimenting. So that's why we have the uh, this research methodology as an DAC in semester six and seven. Now, if you come to semester seven and eight, uh, you will notice a stark uh, difference. Now, you don't have three discipline-specific core anymore. You have just one single discipline-specific core paper. Now, also we need to relate that whoever is going to study the fourth year, if he goes for the master program, he or she is going to study only one year of master to get a master's degree. So somewhere there has to be correlation or, you know, between what we teach in the first year of the master's degree program and what we are teaching in the fourth year. So ultimately because, you know, only one year of master program will be enough for such student to get a master's degree. So therefore, a core paper is there. But then, as we go ahead or progress towards, you know, specialization, the discipline-specific elective becomes much more important. Whenever we say core, that means the student has to compulsorily study that paper. Fine. Core is compulsory. And that's the only compulsory course, I would say. Isn't it? The rest, discipline-specific electives are the specializations which you will be giving. So, therefore, in the fourth year, you have the focus on discipline-specific elective, while the core is only one paper, and discipline-specific elective, maximum three paper per semester in semester seven and eight will be studied from a pool of courses again. So we can't say these, these are the three discipline-specific electives available to you, you opt for it. No, if there are three, we have to provide at least six discipline-specific core courses. When there is one discipline-specific elective to be opted, there should be at least three options available, minimum. Okay? Now, uh, coming to, again, the choice part of it. So many a students may find that he or she may start with a science course, maybe he has, you know, he changed his interest and liking because remember, he has been studying four GEs. Minimum four GEs he would be studying the first six semester. And he might find a particular discipline to be more interesting and he would want to minor in that particular subject. So for minoring in a particular subject other than the core, the student has to pick up at least seven GEs of that discipline. So somebody who is doing, say, physics honors, now he wants to minor in psychology. Fine. So he has to at least opt seven GE papers of psychology to get a minor in psychology. Okay. So in a undergraduate program where there is only one core discipline, generic through the generic elective only the student will be able to create minor subject or minor discipline. Okay. So GE becomes very important for those honor students who would like to minor in a different discipline. So it can be you know. You have BA program in economics and mathematics. Economics may be, you know, uh, yeah, that I'll come, multidisciplinary I'll come later. But any student who is pursuing a single core discipline program may minor in a different discipline. If he or she is able to choose or study seven GEs of that discipline. If English may minor in English, then student has to pick seven GEs from English. Then only he will minor in that particular discipline. Okay. So at the end of, uh, oh, regarding the dissertation part of it, when we talk about uh, single core discipline program, a student already has studied, you know, minimum, if you can see, uh, you have, if you look at the code, the column on discipline specific elective, there are 20 core discipline which are already studied. Okay. And if you look at the discipline specific elective, if a student chooses from the third semester discipline specific elective, you have one, two, three, then four. And then there are three, three each in the seven and eight semester to so ten discipline specific elective. So student would have studied the twenty discipline specific core and maximum ten discipline specific elective. So he has studied thirty papers focused on one discipline only. So therefore, if he has a research bent of mind, the student may choose to write dissertation on that particular major, that single discipline, or in case if he has developed a flavor in a particular GE fine, to make it a minor, he may also write a dissertation on the minor. Or if he wants to look at the intersection of or interplay or interdisciplinary research on the minor and major together. So, but then a student may not want to go for a dissertation also. Then he can choose academic project as a track. Or third, student may also choose Sir, I'm only 
अबाउट सिंगल डिसिप्लिन स्पेसिफिक कोर्स डीएससी भी एक ही सब्जेक्ट का होगा डीएस ई भी एक ही सब्जेक्ट का ई डिसिप्लिन स्पेसिफिक कोर्स भी सेम सब्जेक्ट है डिसिप्लिन स्पेसिफिक इलेक्टिव भी सेम है फॉर सिंगल कोर्स डिसिप्लिन प्रोग्राम मल्टी डिसिप्लिन का मैंने अभी नहीं आया है That's true, sir. But we are not looking at minoring within a discipline. Fine. That specialization will be indicated by the mark sheet itself. In uh, what is what is the area of specialization? That will be indicated by the mark sheet. But when, when we talk about minor and major, we are talking about in a single core discipline program, a discipline which is different from the core. So GE may there are ten option maximum. If you uh, not one second, let me just take you back. So if you look at the number of GEs, you have one in the first semester, second. Then in third and fourth there is an option to choose for GE. So you have already now if if you choose then it becomes four, fifth and sixth. Then you have six again. Then you have four in the seven and eight. So in total a student will have ten GEs maximum to be studied. Fine. Whereas compulsory is only four, but choice is there to study up to ten. And out of the ten, if a student wishes to minor, he has to choose seven of a particular discipline. That will be minor. होगा. ठीक है. Yes, yes. No, ma'am, we do not want to uh, see. Here, we are not talking about writing. Uh, see, writing a dissertation on minor is fine, but you can. We are talking about GE papers because seven, so that that seven should be there. Yeah. Okay. Now, coming to entrepreneurship, we are trying to bring in entrepreneurship as skill enhancement course. a uh, total credit to be earned is 28 there's no doubt about that fine usme ugcf mein agar dekhenge wahan specified nahi hai but we would see if you if you talk in terms of specializing because even minor can become a course of study for your pg program fine so therefore if you are going to do pg program that to for one year then it is better that you study 7 out of 10 in a particular g if you want to write a dissertation that's an addition Yes, yes. But then I. That's why I'm saying when we are talking about focus study, or one year ka hi aapne masters padna hai. So I think it's better to interpret that seven Gs out of ten padhe, or chahe to registration bhi lekin. Huh? PG ki nahi baat kar rahe. See, I will just take you to the UGCF. Main aapko UGCF mein jaati hu. Just give me a minute. I'll show you. I'll show you the exact. Nahi, wahan pe wo hai. Ultimately, UGCF is a document that has been, uh, you know, passed by AC and EC. So, rather than me interpreting, let's have a look at uh, what is there. Okay. Yeah, it says. Uh, पता नहीं इसमें. Actually, ये वो है. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, Nitin, can you please check why it's not? Huh. Yeah, she just trying to bring it up. Can you check again? See, uh, if I read it out from the UGCF, it says. आपके पास अगर UGCF है, then you can refer to page number. Yeah, ठीक है. So it says a student men mentioned uh, now just because I was copying pasting three A tha anyway. So it means a student who is pursuing a single core discipline program may be awarded minor in a discipline on completion of seven semester if he or she earns minimum twenty eight credits from seven GE courses 
of one discipline. For example, if a student pursuing BA Honours History chooses 7 GE courses of Political Science out of a total of 10 GE courses and writes the dissertation, he or she shall be awarded on successful completion of 8th semester major in History and minor in Political Science. Ye hai multidisciplinary wala. Now, let me come to the major. Yeah. So, this is the major uh, single core discipline program where if the student secures in that discipline at least 50% of the total credits, that is 88 credits in that discipline, ye major ho gaya, uh, out of the total of 176. And in case of single core, he shall study 20 GEs, DSEs and at least two DSEs in eight semester. For instance, a student who pursues BCom honors shall earn a minimum 88 credits from 20 DSEs and at least two DSEs in order to get major in commerce. So, ye hai single discipline program ka. Now, minor in a single core discipline program, yeah. So, is me to minor BA honors history ka hai, minoring in political science because political science he is choosing as GE. Then in that case it is said that out of 10, 7 GEs karna hai and write a dissertation. See, dissertation on a minor, on the same discipline. Okay, major, fine. Okay. So, I think it's clear that it's not that you add up 28 from dissertation. Fine, we would like that out of 10, 7 should be focused on that particular discipline, right? Yes. Now coming to table, Hanji. See, if you look at the Abhi Jamil share ke wo cut paste kiya hai is UGCF se. So it is, ha. Usme minor jo hai because you know such a person is going to have that opportunity to choose as a master's degree, you know, discipline. So that's why that much of focus is required. See, we are saying that 28 credits us me lena hai because already major ka to aapke paas bhoot credit hai. Hmm. Twenty-eight credits may hoga, but I think it, the essence is that there should be focus on the dissertation. See, dissertation may have any bulaki minor major hi karlo. Minor hi karlo ya major hi karlo. There is a choice. If you look at the table, I would like to draw your attention to this. Dissertation on major or dissertation on minor or academic project oblique entrepreneurship. Okay? So minor may be leak sakte hai. But minor banne ke liye ji saato parna hi padega. Major may be karenge, kar sakte hai. Because writing a dissertation, you have a choice whether to write. Uh, I think, may I draw your attention, madam? Anji. So, to get a minor, you have to do 7 GE. Chahe aap dissertation us minor mein likho ya major mein likho. Thik hai? One second. One second. Main aapko aage ka dikhati hu. I'll just show you. Thik hai? If you come to the multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary may be dekhi aap, GE banane ke liye kya chahiye? Thik hai? In multidisciplinary, you are having disciplines, fine, more than one. So, if you have three, three core discipline programs, jise BAC mein hota hai, then you already have three core discipline program mein, ek, dis, uh, teen discipline jo ABC karke aap, you will have to study. Let me just take you to the table first. Thik hai? Ah, this table 6, if you look at it, there are three disciplines. Discipline A1, B1, C1. So you have three different disciplines as a core. So in six semesters, you are studying six papers of A, six papers of B, and six papers of C as a core. Fine. Now, if you come to the DSEs, DSEs can be of A, of B, of C. It's up to the student whether to choose DSEs of discipline A, B, or C. Okay? But compulsorily, he will be studying six. Now, in such a case, here, GE is not going to form the minor in multidisciplinary program. Minor will be formed only from the core. Because, because till six, uh, third, uh, six, uh, sorry, six semester, you will be studying all six, three papers, three disciplines. Ka che -che papers padne hai. Now, if you come to the fourth year, fourth year, in, of, uh, fourth year of such a program will not be dedicated to the study of three disciplines. But a student has now to choose only one and proceed ahead. Agar ABC padha hai, teen discipline, three years, fourth year, 
the person has to choose either A or B or C. ठीक है? He cannot choose all the three in the fourth year, right? Because fourth year is again a focus study. So that's why we have either A, B or C. The uh, person will be studying. Then the three DSEs will be there. Fine, along with G, in case if a student wishes to opt. But however, if you look at this particular scheme, what you find is that a student will be able to study. If you look at till the fourth year, multidisciplinary. Me, आपका छः papers हो गए core और साथ आठ eight eight semester तक आपका core जो है आठ पढ़ेंगे. And if you look at the total DSEs, DS uh, discipline specific elective is a total of ten. In case in the third and fourth semester a student chooses to opt for DSE rather than GE, so your total DSE is ten. Now, if a student wishes to major in one of these three disciplines, if a student wishes to major in one of these three disciplines, then in that case he has to study obviously eight core, six in the first six semester, two in the fourth year, and he has to pick out of the ten DSEs. अगर सब डिसिप्लिन ए में मेजर करना है तो उस दस में से नाइन डीएससी शुड बी फ्रॉम ए डिसिप्लिन देन ओनली द स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू मेजर इन दैट ए डिसिप्लिन अदरवाइज ही विल नॉट हैव एनी मेजर ही विल बी जस्ट हैविंग अ आफ्टर द एंड ऑफ फोर्थ ईयर ऑनर्स डिग्री इन बी लाइफ साइंस दैट्स इट अगर साइंस आपका बॉटनिक केमिस्ट्री जोलॉजी वाला अगर मान लो एज एन एग्जाम्पल इफ यू टेक दट एज एन एग्जाम्पल ठीक है सो So therefore, a student has to be carefully guided. In case if he or she chooses to major in one of these three disciplines, he should be guided that whenever you choose the DSEs out of ten, you should focus nine in one discipline. Just me, आपका interest है ज़्यादा उस बच्चे का तो nine DSEs लेंगे और core तो पढ़ेंगे ही पढ़ेंगे उस discipline का eight. Then only the student will be able to and write a dissertation, obviously on discipline A only. Then only he'll be able to get major in that discipline. अगर बी और सी डिसिप्लिन में माइनर करना है छह पेपर्स तो ऑलरेडी पढ़ चुके हैं एक डीएससी जो टेन में से एक डीएससी रहता है अगर बी वाले को माइनर बनाना है बी में आप तक छह कोर पेपर्स पढ़ चुके हैं थ्री इयर्स में और एक डिसिप्लिन स्पेसिफिक इलेक्टिव अगर उन्होंने पहले ही तीन साल में बी सब्जेक्ट का डिसिप्लिन कर लिया है तो वो माइनर बन जाएगा सो से फॉर इंस्टेंस इट कैन बी से स्टूडेंट वो इज परसुंग बी एस सी ऑन बी एस सी प्रोग्राम इन लाइफ साइंस एट द एंड ऑफ फोर ईयर्स विद मेजर इन Botany and minor in say zoology because zoology का उन्होंने छः कोर पढ़ा और एक discipline specific पढ़ा. Then in that case, in the mark sheet, not in the degree, in the mark sheet it will be indicated that he has majored in botany and minor in zoology. This is how it will be interpreted. So the concept of major and minor, fine, particularly minor, uh, uh, major minor is different from a सिंगल कोर डिसिप्लिन प्रोग्राम ऑनर्स प्रोग्राम से आपकी प्रोग्राम जो है ना मल्टी डिसिप्लिन प्रोग्राम का जो डेफिनेशन है मेजर माइनर का वो डिफरेंट है इन दैन ऑनर्स प्रोग्राम जीज विल बी यूज टू क्रिएट अ माइनर बट इन द मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी प्रोग्राम इट इज नॉट द जीज बट द डिसिप्लिन अलॉन्ग विद द डिसिप्लिन स्पेसिफिक इलेक्टिव विच विल गिव राइज टू अ माइनर प्रोवाइडेड सेवन पेपर्स आर स्टडीड ऑफ डेडिकेटेडली ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर हाँ सेवन जीज सेवन जी पेपर तो पढ़ना ही पड़ेगा डेजिटेशन तो हाँ But one second, madam. I'll just clarify one thing. In a multidisciplinary program, to get major in that discipline, a student may have to write. If three discipline का चल रहा है, तो आपको dissertation लिखना ही पड़ेगा उस major discipline में. But if you're talking about BA program where you have only two core discipline, you may have an option. Fine? Because two में क्या चलता है? Let me just show you the next uh, slide. ये this particular table is pertaining to BA program kind of combinations where you have. टू डिसिप्लिन एस अ कोर डिसिप्लिन नॉट थ्री उसमें क्या होगा यू हैव से बी ए प्रोग्राम इन से हिस्ट्री विथ इंग्लिश फाइन सो यू विल स्टडी द स्टूडेंट हैज अ चॉइस इन द फर्स्ट ईयर फाइन एंड अ सिमिलर चॉइस इन थर्ड सेमेस्टर फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर में ही हैज अ चॉइस वेदर टू स्टडी टू पेपर्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री एंड वन पेपर ऑफ इंग्लिश अगर बी ए प्रोग्राम का कॉम्बिनेशन इंग्लिश हिस्ट्री है उनकी चॉइस है दो पेपर हिस्ट्री का पढ़े और एक पेपर इंग्लिश का पढ़े या टू पेपर्स ऑफ इंग्लिश और एंड वन पेपर ऑफ हिस्ट्री दैट इज अ चॉइस गिवन टू अ स्टूडेंट ठीक है सो यू विल स्टडी सो इफ अ स्टूडेंट स्टार्ट्स चूजिंग हिस्ट्री एज द मेजर डिसिप्लिन बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली व्हेन यू हैव टू डिसिप्लिन प्रोग्राम द डिसिप्लिन व्हिच इज चोजन एज द मेजर द स्टूडेंट विल स्टडी टू पेपर पर सेमेस्टर अप फ्रॉम फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर ऑनवर्ड्स टू द सिक्स सेमेस्टर ठीक है सो यू मे हैव द स्टूडेंट 
will be studying say two papers of history in first semester and one paper of english in the first semester second semester he will opt the same thing same combination ye nahi ho sakta ki first year mein first semester mein aapne do paper history kar liya second semester mein ek paper history kar liya aise nahi change kar sakte the combination will be fixed for the one year first year theek hai so two papers of history one paper of english in the first and second semester now when he comes to the third semester there is a choice because sometimes student may have a liking more liking for the other discipline which he has studied only one per semester so he should be given a choice in the third semester not in the rest you know forthcoming so in the third semester he has a choice either to convert instead of two studying two papers of history he may start studying only one paper of history from third semester onwards and study two papers of english but whatever he chooses in the third if he changes that option that will continue till the sixth semester he cannot change it later on okay then it will create difficulty for the college while you know implementing it or the functional issues will be there so if you look at uh, the scheme remains the same same uh, one ge will be there now in the case of ba program let me also tell you uh, in the case of ba program the ge is in the first two year that means semester 1 2 3 and 4 it will be a pool of language courses fine because this has been retained in order to uh, you know Uh, take care of the fact that the existing ba program you compulsorily study an english paper and mile till till now but then it will be open to a student from now onwards from this session onwards whoever is going to be admitted fresh to either opt for one an english paper and indian language paper or completely do away with english and and just start using two indian papers also that's the choice of the student fine so the ge is in the case of ba program the generic elective first four semester is only pull of indian languages and english course that you will see theek okay? hai from fifth semester onwards the whole pool of ge is open it will not be only limiting to the language it can be any discipline from fifth semester onwards fifth sixth seventh eighth a student pursuing such program ba program for them the whole ge will be open from fifth semester onwards but for the first four semester it will be a pool of language courses Yes, ma'am. From the three, I understand that the major dissertation is semester five, as I said, and semester eight is continuation. Yes. However, it is in, in the block; it is written independently. Yes, I will explain that. I'll explain that. Students are asking: Can we do major dissertation in semester seven and minor dissertation in semester eight? Let Let me explain. Let me explain. I will show you. There is a. Uh, If I if I refer to this particular document, I will draw your attention to the uh, the notes which is given at the end of table number three. If you go to it, I think it's given in note. We will uh, you know I'll just. Uh, share it with you but i will explain to you right now so, i'll explain to you madam second, hmm. exactly the same problem we will do dissertation in semester 7 and a project for an entrepreneur no no let me explain ma'am so if huh. it is continuation as i understand then we should have been say the same as semester 7 yes 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 but i think ha huh. which one no 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 uh, Four plus two, actually, for it's six credits in total. Fine. So I think uh, I think I have I might have picked up the older version of the table. I I'll tell you why. It was previously, if you remember, when we had uh, discussion with the stakeholders, with the heads and principals separately, uh, there was a suggestion that eight credits in total. Please sit down. Eight credits in total for a dissertation is very less. Student will not be interested to invest so much of time and energy in writing dissertation. that's why a suggestion was made that why not make it 12 okay so that's why two more was added so it's for my own understanding i'm sorry that is creating a confusion number 1 so it will be dissertation will be a total of 12 credits 7 and 8 combined now the reason why we have not we have not said that it will be one you know uh, dissertation it's written in the text no doubt but in the table there may be a confusion because we have to make assessment at the end of seven semester also and eight semester also it's not that you start writing dissertation in the seventh semester and you'll be assessed at the end of eighth semester it's nothing like that why why again there is a rational the rational is that if you do not make an assessment at the end of seventh semester a student will not start writing the dissertation 
Fine. So that's why we said, let's outline the criteria on the basis. We will do assessment at the end of seventh semester. So as per discussion that uh, came up, which I can share with you today, which will be concretized as we talk about assessment later on. But the thing is that uh, in the seventh semester, a student should be able to identify a research problem. He should be, he should have completed the survey of literature on that particular topic. At least minimum two things he should have done. And in case if it is an empirical research that he wishes to do, a research design should also be at least a draft research design should be there. So that if he has to go to the field and collect data, that can be done in the eighth semester. So therefore, these criteria for assessment will be provided so that you are able to assess a student at the end of seven semester for those eight credits. For those uh, six credits, sorry. Okay? Huh? No, it's a, it's six credit only. There is no bifurcation. It's a credit. It's four credit. It's it's six credits and uh, total from the same dissertation. Now, if you look at the draft uh, draft given guidelines given, uh, it was said that there should be two dissertations written, one on major and one on the minor. But then this uh, you know deliberations happened in the uh, with the stakeholders. But you all also, if you remember that. In one semester, if you are giving to write dissertation, you won't come with the quality work. And we want that quality work should be done. And ours, our duty is to facilitate that. And that's why instead of writing two, one whole year, you are writing dissertation on one, either major or minor, focus on that, but assess at the end of each semester. Okay? That is the uh, motive. I hope, uh, Professor Anupam, Madam, it's clear now. Okay? So why we are clarifying? Because you know there may be certain things which we thought it's understood. You know, when you make it, there is a presumption. But it is you who will be taking it forward to the student who will ultimately make those choices. So that's why please kindly orient, when you orient the student, kindly tell them that it is one dissertation, but assessment will be made separately at the end of seven and eight semester. Right? Thank okay. You. Yes. I think uh, it should be very uh, abhi hum first semester I think we can do that as a good suggestion for the sake of clarity we can list down along with how to assess you know, assessment criteria ke sang sang aa jayega Haanji. can we just finish the structure and come to the question answer so uh, Now, if you come to table number seven, you will find that uh, the restriction uh, or the constraints we had when we had three core discipline, core, you know, three different core disciplines, vaisa nahi hai. So, a student can easily create might. So, you will have, you know, at the end of uh, six semester, for one discipline in a BA program, the student, if he doesn't change his option, he would be studying 12. 12 of one. Uh, you know, uh, course, sorry, of one discipline and six of the other discipline. So we presume that a student will definitely go, you know, uh, to specialize in the fourth year on that major discipline. So that's why uh, these category of courses are said to be a multidisciplinary program with major in so and so, right? So if you are majoring, so that's why when we formulate the courses also, we said category one courses where we are talking about one single core discipline, you have three discipline specific core in the first year. Category two courses given by a particular department will be for opting that particular subject as a major. Managing English as an honors paper, uh, in the first semester, uh, the, 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 uh, the English department has to give three discipline specific core paper. Now, English as a BA program discipline, with English as major, you provide two discipline specific core papers in the first semester. And if you want to provide English as a non-major. Why I am saying non-major? Because it is possible that a student may not opt DSE of that particular paper. Sir, if English ka code che padke chhod deta hai, then it becomes a non-major. Ek DSE le, le lete hai English ka, then it becomes, English becomes a minor. So that's why, it, since it is left to a student, that's why we say that in case of non-major, you will provide only one discipline specific core paper for the category 3. Jahan pe hum keh rahe ki, us discipline mein non-major ki tarah opt kar rahe hai to. Thik hai? Right? So, uh, a student can easily make, because on those many number of 80 credits, 
not not even by writing dissertation agar teen core discipline program chalte hain to dissertation has to be written in that discipline to make it a major but in the case of ba program where you have just two core discipline then in that case dissertation may be written of the minor also because you would have earned 80 credits otherwise from the core and the electives of that discipline theek hai so any uh, ha major ka to say say for example major you see the student will be studying 20 dses minimum and two dses fine and uh, in the in the eight semesters so if he to ha eight nahi hai in fact 10 ho jayega iska two dses nahi hai four ho jayega so 88 credits compulsorily a student will earn fine in a single core discipline program a student will study 20 discipline specific core and minimum four discipline specific electives in three years sorry four years sorry so total jo hai 88 credits minimum ban jayega unka if he studies all dses 10 ki 10 dses le lete hain usi subject ka ठीक है जीई का ऑप्शन नहीं लिया है थर्ड और फोर्थ सेमेस्टर में तो और फोर्थ ईयर में भी जी नहीं लिया डीएसई ही लिया है तो आपके कितने बन जाएंगे ट्वेंटी प्लस थर्टी फाइन थर्टी पेपर्स मल्टीप्लाई बाय फोर क्रेडिट्स वन ट्वेंटी क्रेडिट्स उसी चीज में उसी डिसिप्लिन में अर्न कर लेंगे सो ऑब्वियस ही बात है एटी एट ही चाहिए आपको मिनिमम मेजर बनाने के लिए वो मेजर बन ही जाएगा ठीक है अगर जी लेते हैं तो सात जी लेने से उस पेपर में माइनर बन जाएंगे ठीक है now coming to uh, major in the case of multiple core discipline program i have already explained usme kam se kam 80 credits lena hai out of 176 credits and uh, so a student may study 6 dses then at least 3 dses electives in the first 3 years uske baad fourth year mein to obviously you will study two core and then six discipline specific electives and then write a dissertation to un sab mein milake the person will be having a major in that discipline particularly when we are talking about uh, three core discipline program two core mein to apne aap ban jayega aaram se theek hai so now coming to how to maximize resources i know that uh, most of the colleges have this issue because how can we provide we have limited number of teachers are already said that say for example if you have chemistry ke teachers they will be dedicated in teaching the uh, core papers of those you know for those students and then you are talking about ge's that means you are teaching students of other departments other than chemistry so how to you know ensure that student get the benefit but at the same time we are trying we sh- how we should maximize our resources so there is a proposal that one second there is a proposal that uh, colleges should be made uh, into you know group into clusters which we call as knowledge networks and uh, maybe some uh, you know one college can one or two colleges in a particular network right can initiate and coordinate so that we are able to give more choices to our student chahe wo generic electives ki paper ho chahe skill enhancement ki paper ho chahe value addition ki paper ho ya ability enhancement ki paper so so if a if a college a is providing say first three skill enhancement courses in their college maybe b is providing 5 6 7 fine c is providing say 21 22 23 in case if i talk about listing down the skill enhancement courses which are being approved which is 43 in number to alag alag colleges apne expertise jo teachers hai faculty members ki expertise workload all these jo bhi relevant factors hai usko dekh ke agar identify karte hain and they are able to come up with different skill enhancement courses ka pool choices and if you kind of coordinate amongst themselves have a common time table for those because it's only two credits that means two hours in a week maybe you can hold the class say on a saturday 2 to 4 or 4 to 5 or 3 to 5 whatever fine that will be enable the students to get more choices fine without increasing the number of faculty in your college so i think coordinating and sharing the resources will maximize the options which are available to students further it is not just about um, you know making more choices in terms of ge's scs aecs and vscs there is also another perspective we all know that from third semester onwards student have the option of internship apprenticeship project and so on community outreach now let me t- we all know how many students we have in our colleges and how many opportunities for internship are there it is not possible that every student who opt for internship will be able to provide that kind of you know facility though we are trying our best but i think uh, you know we may not be able to fulfill all the you know uh, wishes or choices of the student in terms of internship so why not have when we are talking about internship why not we engage we have so many teachers in different colleges who are uh, you know doing projects uh, or maybe who have expertise in a different area say for example even in chemistry a person who is 
and uh, who has done PhD, who is teaching in a particular college, may have a different expertise than the uh, you know teacher of chemistry teaching in that college. So why not? And if you have a project, why not engage such students during their internship program so that they are able to get the best out of the other teacher? Fine. So that is something which we can work out, and that is possible only when colleges coordinate and cooperate amongst themselves. And that's why we are proposing to create uh, you know cluster colleges very soon. So I would uh, you know request you from the from, from whatever from the, from the core of my heart that to make. Uh, you know, implementation of the national education policy successful. The prime responsibility is on you. Okay? We have made a structure, and we have discussed it with you, you have given input. But how do you take it Because ultimately, at the ground, you are the implementers. Fine. So, without your support, without your active cooperation and collaboration amongst yourself, this is not possible. So therefore, this is my humble request that uh, please be forthcoming be initiative and be ready to facilitate so that uh, the university as a system, university colleges as a system, we are able to implement the policy in true spirit. And we are able to provide the kind of choices that we are contemplating in UGCF 2022. Thank you so much. I'll just take one by one question, yes. BCom program will also have uh, the BA program kind of structure. Okay, that means that means the language course, fine, in the GE pool will be fixed for first two years. Semester one, two, three, four may our BCom program may where language for high just a BA program ko hai. Fine. Other than that, jo core hai, jo core courses say what you will find is in BCom program they have multidisciplinary they have uh, papers pertaining to say taxation business law bhi hai aapki management ki bhi baat karte so it's kind of it's a range that you see so BCom program structure is kind of similar to the BA program where in the first two year the language uh, pool is is given for the GE uh, as a GE pool okay from fifth semester onward the pool the rest of the courses in the GE pool will be open okay It's, it's a separate structure, fine. So you can have different uh, course, yes, in a program, yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Uh, should we take the questions first or? Okay, okay. Uh, reg uh, regarding AC uh, pool that you have talked about, as of now we have two pool, one of environmental science and the other is the Indian languages, which may be added later on. But as of now in our structure, we have just these two categories of courses. Okay. Second is regarding uh, skill enhancement courses, capping of number of seats to be provided. I think that depends upon the infrastructure that is available uh, within an institute and uh, also the teacher's availability. So I, that is a 
uh, I think our decision which is to be taken. Yeah. There would be a minimum cap. There would be a minimum cap before we opt for SECs or GEs to because that counts on our resources. There would be a minimum cap. But since the flexibility is there, the choice of student is equally important for us. So there is no cap on the maximum number of students. If we have if we have more number of students opting for same SECs, GEs or these subjects, we can have different sections. Depending upon the class size, whatever is ideal for that. But there is no cap. That that you would decide. See, as of now, so there would not be any restriction. We we can't put any of other restriction at our own level. But if you feel, if you feel some cap is essential, so that all our courses are read equally, how we can justify that? See, it is vice versa also. Putting a cap is one question, but how best we can teach, how best we can impart those skills, how best we can impart the other things, that depends upon us. If we are able to impart that, see, this is a mixed variant. So ultimately, the delivery is going to important matter, is going to matter much in these things. But as of now, a minimum cap would be there, but there is no maximum cap. How that distribution? Then, as as already said in the beginning, it is an evolving process. We may over a period of one year, two year, because system would get the stability after one year, two years, three years when we move that system slowly. So that the time would there. What what you are saying is right. Yeah. That this suggestion is this is already in our mind. Ki then we have to devise a mechanism. We are planning for a cluster of colleges also. We are planning for clusters. How best we can this? Because in languages also we are facing severe problems. Ki that number of students would be very less. But to offer those languages, university would also come forward. We would arrange the classes through online mode, specifically for those groups of students for each college at a common point of time. That mechanism we would develop in due course of time. But as far as skill enhancement, value addition, all those courses are concerned, they are to be important. They are to be imparted in the college only. So that is the thing. But all suggestions in this regard also are welcome because we once we would launch this. How many students? Because we have seen, we have got complaints about that also. That many colleges are not offering the the language course which a student want to opt. So here in this NEP 2020, this barrier should not be there. University should come forward. We are there with you to impart that kind of an education also. Maybe an online mode. How all the colleges would coordinate so that a common time is available for those students to get that education. Uh, if I may just add, sir. Uh, we had a discussion just now re relating to maximization of resources, which can be done by creating the cluster colleges, and we are at least contemplating nine groups of colleges, you know, in different areas: north, south, east, west, northwest, southwest, southeast, southwest, and cent uh, central. So, if we do that, uh, it's not only just for ability enhancement courses, but even for skill enhancement courses where the credit is just two, they can coordinate amongst themselves, have a common timetable where maybe the classes can be held on a Saturday, say two to four or three to five, and give that kind of flexibility because we already have 41, 43 courses. And skill. Some course, some uh, in a clustered uh, college group, a college may opt for first three, another may opt some other. So that flexibility is there, and then the limitation of number of students. I think that will also increase number number two. What Madam you just said that there are, there is preference for a particular course. If you give more choices, maybe uh, the student will get equitably distributed amongst uh, these courses. Uh, I think the modalities of coordinating and you know cooperating amongst the cluster colleges has to be worked out by those clusters. So we'll have a nodal or a hub college which will coordinate with the rest and work out the practical functional realities. Uh, as I have just mentioned, value addition course is again a pool of courses. As and when we have more number of courses, it will be added in the pool. So it it is not just specific for first semester. It is a pool which will be offered to the students. It's not semester specific. My second question, ma'am, is that as a commerce teacher, can I teach Dalit mathematics as SEC or uh, <coughs> mathematics course, 
See, for teaching the courses under SEC and uh, well who edit, I think there will be a training module for teachers and those who are trained and they will be able to deliver and take those courses and deliver to the students. Right now, yes. Ma'am, I have one query that is regarding the GE courses for BA program. You said they will be language courses. It's fine. Okay, uh, my query is about BA program courses. You said the first four uh, GE courses for the first four semesters will be language courses and the document says that they will be two languages. Yes. But you said the students can opt for one language in all the four semesters. No, no, no. I said two languages. It can be English and an Indian language or it can be two Indian languages. Okay. Right? Yeah. Thank so you. for one language, they'll study two papers. Two, two papers per hanging. Semester one, two, three, four. Right? Okay. Uh, Ma'am, for uh, set papers in first semester and second semester, uh, table says that there is a choice from a pool of sec papers. Then in third semester or, and fourth semester, it says choose one sec paper. So that means in first year, there is a common pool which will be offered to all students. And in second year, uh, sec paper uh, related to that discipline only will be offered. Because in a pool of sec papers, there are papers from other disciplines also. Skill enhancement courses is a pool of courses. In all the semesters. That is the definition I had you know, shared with you. It's a common pool. So okay. we have to offer all the courses to all the students or we can uh, restrict to some of the courses the out of that pool? We have to restrict otherwise it's not possible. Can you repeat your question? Ma'am, please repeat. If the college has the ability to uh, offer all the courses, there is no issue. Okay. Because for AEC, it is being uh, all languages we have to offer, whether we have the resources or not, and there will be a common online class. So, but for SEC papers, we have to restrict as per our no, There will also be cluster colleges. Okay. We are uh, uh, taking out the modalities for the cluster colleges also. Uh, Ma'am, I want to ask about AEC course. Uh, the courses which are offered in the first year are environment science and uh, languages. So the same will be repeated in the second year. And for value added also, if one student, uh, I mean, uh, value added course taken in the first semester, will it continue till the fourth semester or there will be choice for change, changing? See, as on, as on date, we have developed our courses for two credits. Okay. So maybe, like, if you are uh, talking about extension of one paper, you have studied physics one, then you can... Maybe a kind of expansion would be there. Eight, all these courses would be standalone courses of two credits each. Right. So then, then it depends upon the student whether a student would like to continue with the same kind of a skill or other skills, same kind of value or others. Because we are offering all those courses as a uh, plethora of uh, pool before them, so they can choose. So they can change in the second year. Uh, there is no question of change. Okay. It is a question of option. And yes. please throw uh, some more light on the last point: entrepreneurship and uh, uh, that uh, which was after. Uh, uh, the skill project. enhancement, the skill enhancement courses right now are standalone courses of two credit each. But there will be more discipline-specific skill enhancement courses. They may be progressive in nature, say uh, first uh, level or the second level, then third level, then fourth level. Student may be able to choose from. But each paper, uh, 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 we will try to be a stand standalone course uh, so that if the students wish to do various skills, then also it's okay. But if wish to proceed with the specific skills in a progressive manner, that is also a good option for the student. But right now, all the skill courses here are standalone courses. More courses to come in that pool. One more information, just addition to this. All our courses, this time, whatever syllabus we would be would be available to you. We are also mentioning in each course what is the prerequisite for that course. So if there is a prerequisite for that course, a student cannot opt for course two before studying course one. So that prerequisite is mentioned in all those courses. Otherwise, it is open. Wherever there is no prerequisite, then any class 12 requirement is there. They can study any of these courses is there. So all courses are having a specific prerequisite also because we have not kept skill courses or value addition courses at some lower level, maybe a higher level also, but, but prerequisite is also mentioned there. Good afternoon, everyone. Just like Ma'am said, Kantawali Ma'am said, that clustering of colleges. And it's a wonderful and excellent idea. But being a science teacher, I want to give an input that for all mostly optional papers, required some mandatory instrument. And because of financial constraints of department as well as institute, we cannot run that. We are not having that instrument. 
but these instruments are very much necessarily required to run these optional paper. So whenever we are having, if university is thinking of this mechanism clustering of college, my request is this, that you have a center located, which is geographically pass-pass, practically which you can go to, time management, so please, that instrument will be available to you. As many of the instruments are clustered, which is very important to run the paper, otherwise it is injustice to offer that paper. Thank you so much. I would like to add one thing here, which I did not mention in my, uh, you know, session. That is, every student has the flexibility of earning four more credits or four less credit in a semester. Fine. The prerequisite, in case if he or she wishes to exit and earn a certificate, yeah, diploma, yeah, degree, the requisite credit remains. It is, I mean, he has to earn that much credit only then he or she shall be given that, uh, you know, respective certificate, diploma, etc. However, a student is given the option of earning more credits. So that much flexibility is there. Agar elective may, just say, sir, bhi bataya, agar elective paper nahi unse ho para wo cheez, then he can study some other, but attend class, attend karne ke baad hi exam de paayenge. Aise nahi ki aap aise exam mein baat jaye, aise nahi hoga. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, all of us have the same question. It relates to BCom Pass. To our understanding, what you said when you replied to her question, you said that BCom Pass will run like BA program. But when we look at the syllabus, uh, which is given on the website of Commerce Department, BCom is running as a separate course. BCom Honours, BCom Honours running like any other Honours course, but BCom is running as a separate course and BA program with Commerce option is running uh, like multidisciplinary. See, that, that what, what your question is, that is very clear. In BA program, we always offer two subjects, DSC 1, DSC 1A, DSC 2A, or DSC 1B, fine? That is clearly for BA program. So in BA program, you are having two subjects. I, the choice is yours, which subject is to be offered, because that depends upon the choice of the student, which is major and which is minor. Wherever the student opts that this is major subject, then the students would take two subjects, DSC 1 and DSC 2, of that very paper. Otherwise, the minor paper could be the other one. Now, coming to the second part, see, we discussed the structure of VCOM program with the specific department. Here, we are teaching two subjects in BA, if you really look into that. But what we got the information from BCom and from our other members also, BCom itself has several subjects included in one course. This is not a unitary subject. So therefore, in line with their requirements, specific requirement, we are offering them a structure that DSC 1, DSC 2, DSC 3, whatever three, they can offer those courses. So there, we are, we are already modifying that kind of a structure also, which would be available on our website. Okay, what are the courses that, are, that can be offered in BA, BCom program? So it is almost, see, we don't want to make several structures which can put us in trouble. Now, it is very easy for anyone to remember that every student has to get 22 credits once one year, 22 credits in second semester, like this. So there is, no, there is a uniformity. There is a uniformity as far as the core courses are concerned. So there is no distinction. There is a uniformity in ability enhancement course, skill enhancement course, value addition courses also. So there is no ambiguity. So it is very easy for any one of us to further give the information to the student because this is our structure. Only difference is in the broad structure of DSC or GE, depending upon the course the student is going to opt. But we have accepted this argument of the Commerce Department just because they are having a already multidisciplinary approach is there. So we are, we are offering multidisciplinary in BA program also. We have accepted multidisciplinary in BCom program also. Whatever you choose, see, table 6 is also become program or you say DSC A1 or 7 is also like that. I, I'll just add to that. One, one second, I'll just come to that. BCom program, if you look at it, just forget about the core given in table number 7. Rest remains the same for BCom program. Fine? As sir has just explained that in the case of core for BCom program, you can have different discipline because they are studying accounting also, management part also, they are studying law also, whatever is relevant, fine. So therefore core, it can be multi, multi, multidisciplinary, no doubt about that, fine. But, but if you talk about the pool of generic elective, fine, it's only for BA program, if you see in table number seven that GE is fixed for the first four semester, only limited to a pool of language courses. The same remains for BCom program. To that extent, we can say that it's similar and you have the ability enhancements, 
skill enhancement, value addition, hmm. similarly plays as a BA program. Only to that extent, okay? See, we, 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 keep on, we will keep on adding several courses. We have not stopped. See, this is just a list because we want to start semester one. So for semester one, whatever courses, we, our committee could study, our committee could uh, ponder upon, finally they could reach out that syllabus. Only those syllabuses have been released so far, which have been approved by our academic council. It is not this thing that we have stopped here. Our committees of value addition, skill enhancement and ability enhancement, they are still working on various courses. We will keep on adding those courses. So maybe there is a possibility that as on date we have 43 courses in skill enhancement. By the time the semester is launched in first remember, we may add another 7 or 10 more courses. Same thing goes for the value addition also. So this is, this is not static. It will keep on increasing. So the pool would be available to offer those courses. It is, see, the committee is ready to take all the courses. We will, we will take up all the courses. Only thing is see, that whatever you have been teaching, we have to bring down all those courses in a uniform credit structure, two credit structure. So what kind of a credit would be available? So that is to be defined and we have given them the more flexibility for all these things. It could be one one lecture tutorials or 200 or 002. So whatever flexibility is there, that would be there. But we will keep on adding. If there are any suggestions, any courses are there, please pass on all those courses to Professor Payal Mago for skill enhancement courses. She will keep on adding all those courses. And for elucidation, you can give all these courses to Professor uh, Niranjanji. Sir, uh, with this regard, I have had a, I have an issue that I wish to share with you. Uh, sir, may I? Uh, sir, uh, we were just talking about sex subjects. SEC papers, and uh, we do not have a single paper that we can offer. Um, I'm talking about Sanskrit subject. In SEC list of 43 papers, we do not have a single subject of Sanskrit. So uh, SEC is not, basically, if we have to understand, first of all, skill enhancement right now is not only discipline specific. Uh, initially, what we were doing is we were teaching uh, SEC under the disciplines. Now it is not discipline specific. These are the life skills also, skills which will give you jobs which are market oriented, which has some market value. Right now it's just the 43 uh, courses, which are basic courses, which have their market value. And later on, as uh, uh, right now explained by uh, our registrar also, that we will be adding the discipline specific courses also, with some prerequisites or without prerequisites. And they can be progressive in nature if there is a prerequisite, and it can be standalone course also. So slowly and slowly, uh, we'll be adding uh, more courses uh, in the uh, in the pool of the courses. So it is right now not any discipline specific. So ma'am, is there any chance that uh, by November 4th, uh, since we start the first year classes, there would be some addition to the sec list? Again, you're asking the same thing. Please come out of the discipline first of all. Sec is not discipline related always. These are the life skills which are required by the students. There are, I remember sure. that there are courses on uh, communication, there are courses on uh, 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 I agree that these are skills, spreadsheets, and there are certain courses which are very useful for the students to develop their skills in a uh, research field which we, they are going to have in the uh, research data, etc., which they are going to study, uh, which they are going to implement in the fourth semester, uh, sorry, fourth year. So, no, no, I agree that uh, these are not discipline specific. There are papers from I, on Ayurveda and Yoga as well, but these are not from um, says. These are not based on Sanskrit um, literature. So, can these papers be open for Sanskrit so that we can also offer uh, to the... Uh, I have already written a mail to all the head of Thank the departments. I have already written a mail Thank to you. all the uh, head of the departments. So, submit their department specific courses. We'll have just last two questions. One question from one individual only. Madam, uh, I'll just take her question and then you. Yes. Thank you. I'm, uh, Thank you so much, ma'am. I just wanted, one once again, I wanted this clarification on generic elective of BA program that you said. Choose one from a pool of GE languages. So we, I have understood uh, it is to be either English or an Indian language. Is that correct? See, generally, if you look at the existing BA program, it's English oblique MIL. Yes. Fine. If you take uh, forward this particular spirit, so that uh, existing uh, mechanism or structure is being put in that uh, GE. So the, three semesters, four semesters. so the student will take either of the two, right? Not both, no? 
in GE in so India. So there are four semesters. semesters. So if a student say opts for English, he will he'll opt to study two courses of English in in two semesters. Okay? Yes. Yes. And in the other two semester, an Indian language will be studied. Okay. It is also possible that a student may choose to study both Indian languages. Okay. So for language one Indian course, two courses will be studied. For the second Indian language, another two will be studied in the uh, other okay. semester. So first, second, third, fourth semester, it is only going to be languages. All G. Right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, As we had mentioned, uh, Madam, we had shared with you a few minutes back, I think, when we talk about skill enhancement courses, a student who is studying BSc, computer science, will not be given uh, computer basic application as a skill enhancement course, very basic one. So similarly, if your student is already studying Hindi honors, yeah. so ability enhancement may Hindi ki jada kuch aur padhenge. So I think we can... Similarly, there also, in BA also, if a student, there would be two combinations. If, if a student also major as English and minor as something, then in under ability enhancement, they should take some other languages, some other language. So that is the spirit, that is the spirit. But as far as skill is concerned, their skill in different set is different. They can take those things because there we have developed different kinds of courses. So that is the thing. So, last, last ma'am. So, uh, what I understood is that table uh, 6 is for DCOM program. It seems like this and table 7 is for BA program. Uh, in table 6 in Sunday Collective, it is written, choose one from the pool of courses G1. And uh, there is a difference and in here in DCOM program, this is choose one from the pool of GE languages. So it means that in DCOM program, the uh, GE is not, so it is not compulsory the languages, the, uh, the GE. For, for BA program and, and DCOM program, program yes. it is compulsory language GEs. But it is not written here in table 6. If table 6 is not made okay, for okay. program. So it is compulsory for DCOM and BA program. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Table 6 is meant for you have three multidisciplinary courses like BA, life, BAC, Life Science, BAC, Physical Sciences, Mathematical Sciences and so on where you study three different disciplines. BA program is two of them, it is table 7, hai, right. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. I request everyone to join for lunch and thank you for patient hearing and I hope any kind of confusion, doubt, whatever remains even after this session, yeah, you can you, uh, get in touch with me, you can write to me or meet me, whatever, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, please uh, join.